All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to evaluate a very chill and soothing integral since it's summer. Namely, I want to evaluate the double integral of arctangent of y over x, where d over the domain d, where d is the following wedge. And let me just draw it out. I think it's easier. So if this is the line y equals to x, and this is, if you want, the positive axis, then d is just a wedge, say, of radius 2. So d is a circle wedge, where this is, if you want, the circle x squared plus y squared equals to 4. And it's underneath the, the thing y equals to x and the positive axis. Now, because d is a circle or thingy, and turns out because we have arctangent of y over x, this is a perfect time to use polar coordinates. And so, the point is, this becomes something of something, r dr d theta, and arctangent, we have to transform it a little bit. Okay, I'm trying to do too many things at the same time. So first, let's figure out what r is. So again, r here is the radius, something like that. And notice, because we're entrapped or enclosed in this disk of radius 2, namely x squared plus y squared equals to 4, notice that the radius is precisely between 0 and 2. Because the smallest it could be is here, it's 0. The largest it could be is 2. And so r is basically between 0 and 2. And next thing, let's try to determine the angle. So notice here we have the angle theta. And the angle, well, it could go from 0 to whatever that angle is. So this is 0 to something. And well, now let's try to determine that something. So I think the easiest thing to realize is, well, this is, you know, the first quadrant corresponds to pi over 2. And here we're like cutting the first quadrant in half. So it has to be pi over 4. Or what you could do is just plug in a couple of points. If this is 1, this becomes 1. And we have a right triangle with 1 and 1. So the biggest angle has to be pi over 4. So it's 0 to pi over 4. And now let's figure out the arctangent thing. And you'll see it becomes very beautiful. So arctangent of y over x is arctangent. So y is r sine of theta, and x is r cosine of theta. The r's magically cancel out, and you get arctangent of sine theta over cosine theta. But that's just the same as tangent theta. And notice, now you get arctangent of tangent theta, so this very complicated function, it's nothing else than theta. So we can just erase this, and we get theta r. How cool is that? Okay. And now let's evaluate the integral. And the nice thing is, here we have two things depending on two different variables, and we have constant endpoints. So it turns out this integral is just a product of two things, namely the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of theta d theta, and the integral from 0 to 2 of r dr. And again, if you want, I just use the fact that the integral from a to b and c to d of f of x, g of y, dx dy, Make sure to respect the endpoints. It's the integral from a to b of g of y dy times the integral from c to d of f of x dx. And so we turn this complicated integral, super complicated integral, into two easier integrals. 
And now we can just evaluate this. An antiderivative of theta is one half theta squared. So we get one half pi squared over 16. And an antiderivative of r is one half r squared. So it becomes one half two squared. And how cool is that? So two squared is four, which cancels out with the one half and one half. And in the end, you get pi squared over 60. Awesome, right? Okay, yeah. I, I think it's so great. And that's why I really like polar coordinates. All right, so if you like this chill multivariable calculus session and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.